YouTube, it's Thea, and I am here with my wrap up for August, September, and October. So it has been a while since I've done a wrap up, um, and I figured I would incorporate the last three months of reading. Um, so I'll just kind of go through um, the books, the ratings, and then I'll give a couple little um, things about why rated that way, but I probably won't go into a lot of details. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So for August, I have a total of seven things. The first the first thing that I read uh, being Sleepless Volume 2, I rented this audio, I uh, borrowed this graphic novel from the library, so I don't have a physical copy to show you guys, but this is the second and final part in the Sleepless Duology graphic novel series. Um, I didn't like this one as much as I liked the first one. I gave this one three stars. I just feel like it wasn't as strong. It was kind of rushed the whole, I feel like maybe it was supposed to be longer and found out that they weren't continuing or something. Um, but I just felt like this volume itself was kind of rushed and the plot was a little lackluster. Um, I still enjoyed it. I gave it three stars, but I didn't love it as much as the first one. Then I picked up Zelda, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess Volume 2. I uh, really enjoyed this. Um, I don't think I liked it as much as I liked the first volume. I ended up giving this three and a half stars. Um, I do really enjoy this manga series. I've been having a lot of fun um, learning more about the plot and the story behind Twilight Princess. I do want to continue on with the series. Um, but I, I also feel like this volume was also a little rushed and kind of had some weird plot points where it was a little slow, but overall I still really enjoyed it and I gave it three and a half stars. Then I picked up The Beauty of the Moment by by Tanaz Bathina. Um, I ended up giving this three and a half stars as well. Um, I thought it was fine. It was a cute contemporary. It was pretty innocent. Um, it did have a couple hard hitting topics, but overall I just don't tend to score contemporaries very high in general. Um, but I thought it was fine. Um, there was parts of it where it felt like the character was written it younger than she was. Um, and overall I found it was just okay. So, I mean, overall I just felt like it was just kind of an okay contemporary um, and gave it three and a half stars. I next picked up the audiobook for I Wish You All the Best. I don't remember the author, um, but I absolutely loved this contemporary. I know I just said I don't tend to rate contemporaries very high, so um, I have to really, really like love a contemporary in order to rate it very high. I absolutely loved this. I gave it five stars, which is a very high rating for me. I don't give out a lot of five stars, but I felt a connection to this book that I can't really describe. I just devoured the audiobook in like a day. Um, I felt myself crying throughout this and I just felt so much for the main character and I felt the pain and the writing was a beautiful, I just absolutely loved this book. I gave it five stars. I highly recommend for anyone out there who has is looking for like more um, queer books with non-binary characters, absolutely amazing. Check it out. It's a 2019 release, so it's still fairly new, but I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. I cannot wait to read more from this author. I then picked up The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages Legendary Edition. This is both novels. This is both stories in one. Um, I've been slowly making my way through these legendary editions. Um, this was okay as well. I gave it three and a half stars. Um, parts of it did drag a little bit, um, but overall I really enjoyed it. I don't know how accurate these stories are to the games, but I enjoyed it. I gave it a three and a half stars. Not my favorite of the legendary editions, um, but still enjoyed it. And the second to last thing that I read is Raven, Daughter of Darkness, Volume 2, The Darkest Titan Takes Flight by Marv Wolfman. He is the original creator of Raven. Um, this is the second volume in the Raven series. Don't want to talk too much about it because it is uh, a sequel from the first one, so I don't want to spoil any. This follows Raven in high school. She is kind of dealing with who she has now found out who her father is. It's kind of dealing with that, dealing with being a high schooler, dealing with 
finding out about her powers and finding out who she is. And um, I enjoyed it. I gave it three and a half stars. Uh, enjoyed it more than the I enjoyed it more than the first volume, but still just wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, not my favorite Raven comic that I've ever read, but I still enjoyed it. Gave it three and a half stars. And the last thing that I read in August is Heavy Vinyl, Ride on the Road. This is a really cute little graphic novel. Uh, at the time, thought it was gonna be a standalone, but it apparently is getting a sequel. Um, it follows these group of girls who work in a record store, which is a front for an underground kind of girl uh, fight club kind of thing and it's about the bonds that they form also fighting crime and um i really enjoyed it i gave it four stars it would have been a five star read for me if it was a little longer i wanted more <laughs> um which isn't necessarily a bad thing but i was having so much fun reading it and it's absolutely adorable um i really really love the art style it's very reminiscent of boombox who also does fence which I also love as well. Um, and I cannot wait to see more from these girls. And it's just a fun, it's kind of middle grade, kind of YA. Um, but I think it has something for everybody. If you like female friendship groups, if you like female empowerment, and um, it also has some cute little like music throughout it because it is kind of like a little bit of like a battle of bands thing kind of a thing as well. Um, but I really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars. And we've made it to September. I've read a total of five things in September. And the first thing that I read in September is Fence Volume 3 by C.S. Bacat. This is the third, I don't know if it's the last, but it's definitely the most recent published volume in the graphic novel series. This is a really cute middle grade YA graphic novel series that follows uh, a group of boys at an all boys kind of fencing uh, academic prestigious academy. Um, I absolutely love this series. I think it has something for everybody. I'm not a huge sports person, but I really, really love this series. Um, it's got LGBTQ representation. It's got um, just healthy competition. It's got male friendships and male bonds um, and absolutely adorable. It's again, published by Boombox and they have a very distinct, just adorable art style and definitely, definitely, worth a read. Um, one of my favorite series, this one of my great favorite graphic novel series this year, probably in my top 10 favorites of all time. Um, but I hope we get more from Fence. I hope this isn't the last one. Um, I ended up giving this volume four stars because um, I felt that the ending was a little rushed felt that this volume was a little rushed. And I don't know if that's because they didn't know if it's completed or if it's getting picked up again, um, but I still really enjoyed it. Still love the series, hope we get more, but this volume was just not the strongest of the three, so I gave it four stars. And the next thing that I read in September was the first thing that I read for Schwabathon, and that was Shades of Magic, Volume 1, The Steel Prince. This is the prequel graphic novel series that takes place in the Shades of Magic world. Um, this follows Maxim, who is Cal's adopted father, follows him as a teenager. Um, he kind of uh, leaves his palace because he is a prince, um, kind of goes against his father's wishes and goes on this kind of like dangerous military adventure, um, winds up in a port city and things happen and he kind of gets in gets involved in some trouble um, and kind of goes from there. I was very excited for this and I still enjoyed it, but I did not love it. Um, I gave it three and a half stars. I enjoy, I enjoy the Shades of Magic world so much. And I think I was expecting something from this that I didn't quite get. I don't know what that was, um, but I feel like I just didn't have a connection to this as much as I did to the Shades of Magic trilogy. I am still very interested in this. I wanna pick up the rest of the novel. I wanna pick up the rest of the volumes and give it a read. This is the first novel, so it's still kind of a lot of buildup, but I think that there's just something lacking in the graphic novels that you have in the books and it, this is a lot shorter so you don't get 
a lot of the world building and the character development that she does so well on the Shades of Magic books. And um, I was think I was just missing that from this, but I still really enjoyed it. I'm excited to find out more about Maxim, about his past and how he kind of winds. I'm um, excited to find out more about Maxim and his journey. And I do love the Shades of Magic world so much that I do want to continue. Um, but I think I was expecting to like this a lot more than I did. Um, and I gave it three and a half stars. I next picked up Vicious by V. E. Schwab and gave that a read. I finally understand why everyone loves it so much. I am so happy and I am so happy that I finally picked it up. I have been itching to read this for so long and I don't know why it took me so long to read it, but I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. I cannot wait to pick up Vengeful. I cannot wait to own my own copy of Vicious. I want to get the like really nice special edition copies. I just absolutely loved everything about this book and I'm beating myself up that it took me so long to read it, but I'm so happy I finally did. I loved it. I gave it five stars. Cannot wait to pick up Vengeful. I next picked up City of Ghosts and did a reread of this. Um, on the second time viewing and the second time reading it, I didn't love it as much. I still enjoyed it. I gave it four stars, um, but I didn't love it as much as the first time around. Um, this was a reread for me because I wanted to reread this before I read Tunnel of Bones and I still really enjoyed it on a reread. Um, still has everything that I love about Victoria Schwab and her writing style. Um, and cannot wait to continue on with this series. Um, I know that the third book is coming out. I want to say next year, early 20, mid 2020. So excited to pick that up. This was still fun to pick up and read a second time. And the last book that I read for Schwabathon in September is The Archived. Um, I finally have picked this up. I've owned this copy for a few years. Um, I know it's one of her very first novels and I really, really, really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I didn't love it. There was a few parts where it dragged on a little bit for me, but I still really enjoyed it. I cannot wait to pick up the sequel. Um, and I just loved the atmosphere in this and the concept was so intriguing and I just, I, I loved it and I gave it four stars. Cannot wait to pick up the second book and understand, I finally understand why everyone is so upset that we don't get any more from this world because it's so interesting. Um, and I hope that we one day get more books in the series, but I still really, really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars. And we have made it to October. October was kind of a weird reading month. I wanted to read a lot of like Halloween atmospheric books. Um, I tried to read a lot of atmospheric Halloween fall books. Um, I have a total of six books that I read slash listened to. The first one being Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve de Colt. This was my book club book for October. Um, so I did have to pick this up and read it. I ended up not loving this. Um, everyone else in my book club loved it. And I don't know, I just, I didn't, I didn't love it. I gave it three stars. I enjoyed it enough. Um, I like the idea that it's a standalone novel. So it's not like a full series. Um, I like that it's kind of a reimagining of Beowulf, which isn't something you normally see. Um, but I, there were parts where it dragged for me, uh, parts where it just felt kind of slow. Um, some of the characters were hard to, some of the girls, I couldn't see the different girls. Some of them kind of bled together for me. And, um, maybe that had to do with, I was kind of listened to it audiobook and I read it physically, but um, I had a hard time figuring out which girl was which and just in general felt like it was all right. So I gave it three stars. Um, I know that there's kind of like a standalone companion that's coming out to it. it I might pick that up, um, but in general, this was just okay for me. Next picked up Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. I ended up giving this four stars. I enjoyed it. It kind of has the same feel for City of Ghost. 
some new different things happen. It still kind of has that same feel. I love Cassie and Jacob's relationship. I love having it take place in Paris and I still love everything that Victoria Schwab puts her hands on. So I really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars. Oh, hi, buddy. Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, thanks, buddy. So I picked up Slayer by Kirsten White. I um, have, have I've had this on my TBR for quite a while. Um, I was really excited to pick this up because I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, this seemed like it was going to be the perfect October read, kind of fall, atmospheric. Um, I didn't love it. I ended up only giving it three stars, which I've heard from general consensus that most people kind of feel the same way I feel about it. Um, I did enjoy Nina and Artemis. Um, I had some issues with some of the other characters. Um, it's quite chunky. It could have done with it being maybe a little bit shorter. There are some things in here I don't think that kind of stop the plot. Um, and I just felt like it was okay. I, I still like her writing style. I'm still a fan of Kirsten White. Um, I'll probably pick up this sequel. I won't spend like full price on it, brand new. Um, maybe pick it up from the library or wait till it's been out a while. I'll probably, I will pick up the sequel, but um, this just didn't have the same spark that Buffy has for me um, and ended up only giving it three stars. I then picked up a short story called The Rats in the Walls. This is part of a collection by um, H.P. Lovecraft. This is a short little like 20 page story. Um, I enjoyed it all enough. I gave it three and a half stars. Um, it's a really interesting concept. Kind of deals with a guy who is hearing rats in his walls and people think he's crazy and um, is he actually crazy or is there some, is a rat actually in his walls? Um, but I enjoyed it enough and I gave it three and a half stars. The second to last thing that I read is Gerald's Game by Stephen King. This has been on my TBR for quite a while. I've been wanting to read it. I know there's a movie on Netflix that looks really good. So I was like, okay, I want to pick it up. I've been wanting to finally pick up something by Stephen King and give it a read. Um, this is my very first Stephen King novel I've actually ever read. And I did not like it, you guys. Um, I didn't hate it but I gave it like two stars. I haven't given out a two star rating in a really long time. Um, my main issue, which I think made it to where it was very, very difficult to read the book and get through it is the way he wrote Jesse. Um, some of the things that happen and the way, some of the way he wrote some of the scenes, um, I understand why he is the writer that he is, but I personally just do not like the way he wrote Jesse. As a female, as a woman in 2019, obviously this book was written a long time ago and the culture for women is very different now. Don't think it should be an excuse to write your women the way he wrote Jesse. Some of the things that happen um, about Gerald being able to rape her because they are still married and it's not rape if they're married and even if she doesn't want him to it's part of the game um and I just was very turned off by it and made it very difficult to get through it um I'm happy I finally have picked up a Stephen King I probably will give something else of his a read I have heard from a lot of people that they don't like the way he writes his women um, I can see that now in this, um, maybe some of his newer stuff isn't as bad, but I personally had that just was off putting from the very beginning and it made it very difficult to get through this. So I only gave it two stars and on a happier note, the last book I read in October is these Witches don't burn by Isabel Sterling. This was my book of the month YA choice for October. I wanted something kind of atmospheric, but also that was gonna be kind of fun and light. This is a YA contemporary-ish magical realism um, about a girl named Hannah. She is an elemental witch in modern day Salem. 
and she's kind of just living her life, going to school, uh, dealing with her ex-girlfriend, and all of a sudden people start dying, and there's a blood witch, and there's rituals, and um, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I had um, a lot of fun reading it. It had a couple plot points that were predictable, but it also had a couple plot twists that I wasn't expecting, which I was pleasantly surprised with and happy with. Um, but I really, really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. We are getting a sequel. I'm excited. And I think it was a great way to end the month of October since October was kind of a rocky month with reading. So it was a good way to end the month. So here is a wrap up of everything I've read in the last three months. This is very heavy, I'm gonna put it down. Um, but what have you guys been reading recently? If you've read any of these, any thoughts, comments, and opinions about them. As always, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe to get notified and click the little bell to get notified of when I post new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you are well. Happy reading and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.